Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Brygon Reserve's Barrel Hall, located here in the middle of Margaret River, Western Australia. And today we are going to discuss the launch of the Bruce New Vintage, and we have the privilege this morning to be joined by our chief winemaker, David Longdon. David, uh, would you like to maybe give us a little bit of background on yourself and where, where, what's led you to uh, today in the winemaking stakes and also a little bit of a background of uh, your involvement with Brygon Reserve Wine since 2009? Yep, thank you Robert. Uh, I'm a winemaker with 22 vintages experience. The last 13 of those basically down here in Margaret River, so I've been lucky enough to really get to know the region and the varieties and the best way of expressing the fruit and making some fantastic wines. So I've also travelled a lot and done vintages in California and Bordeaux, but uh, Margaret River is the place where I really want to be. It's, to me, got the finest fruit and to make some of the finest wines in the world, so I'm very proud to be here. I'm very proud to join Brygon in 2009. It was a natural progression for me to uh, help out a wine, an up-and-coming winery that really was focused on quality and that's how I came to be here and I think we've really stuck to what we need to do to make the best possible wines. Yes, we've had incredible success thanks to you. Um, David, just for, for those who are interested in Margaret River in particular, could you explain what the particular merits and special features of Margaret River com has compared to the rest of Australia and why um, I believe 3% we grow 3% of Australia's uh, fruit, but we're actually responsible for up to 25% of the premium wine um, distributed around Australia and the rest of the world. Yeah, which is an incredible seeing that the region really is only about 45 years old, so we've got so much to look forward to in front of us as the vines mature and, and we get better and better at what we do, but the region itself is quite about 110 kilometres from north to south and about 20 kilometres from the coast inland. It is tempered by its proximity to the Indian Ocean, so that keeps temperatures pretty well constant, especially th during the ripening and growing season, so there's not much frost risk and not much big swings in temperature. So once the, the vines get up and running and ripening, there's, there's quite a smooth transition as the flavours develop. And the soils are gravelly loam, quite free draining, quite fertile, but not fertile enough too much so that the, uh, the vines are over vigorous with nitrogen, you know, leaf growth and that sort of thing. There's a little bit of stress on the vines which aids with fruit development. It uh, sits in that magic latitude of uh, 30 to 32, I think, which some of the... 32 to 42. 32 to 42, mm. that some of the great regions are, and similar to a lot of great regions of the world, it's situated on the, the west coast of the landmass, which is something that seems to be familiar with Bordeaux and, and Sonoma and other regions around the world. And do we, uh, would our sister city be Bordeaux, France? Are we in that similar uh, uh, latitude? And um, what similarities do we have with, with uh, Bordeaux, France in relation to our varieties and our, our wine styles in particular? Well, definitely it was, this region was first identified as potential for growing grapes back in about 1967 when Dr John Gladstones from the UWA did a, a big study on the soils and the aspect and he really likened it to Bordeaux right from the word go and he recommended that Bordeaux varieties be the first ones to be trialled and planted here. So the first planters were of the Chardonnay, Ca uh, Cabernet, Semillon, Sauvignon Blancs, Merlots, Cap Franc, Petit Verdot. So it was definitely identified early on in the, in its, the region's birth, if you like, that it was very much aligned with, with the climate of Bordeaux and and the varieties that were recommended were the Bordeaux varieties. Mm. The Chardonnay, Cabernet, Merlot, it really is a French feel. Mm. And and I think a lot of people wonder about Australia, especially Margaret River, given the fact that we were only really incepted in the inception of Margaret River was 1967. Mm. Um, can you explain to us, here we are in a barrel hall using French oak, uh, the, the oldest winemaking technology uh, in the world, um, but we also, in, the, in our uh, other winemaking facility, we have the very latest of the new world. So could you explain a little bit uh, to everybody the combination and the, how we embrace old world and new world to create the absolute optimum quantity, quality of wines here in Margaret River? Uh, definitely our new 
we got access to all the greatest new technology that you know the wine industry has. That the basics of wine making is still an old world, old world technique. Transferring grapes into wine is is as old world as it gets. But we have at our hands a great variety of temperature control, stainless steel machine harvesting, all these techniques that we can use to bring the fruit in in optimum quality and retain that quality during fermentation. And it was said to me by a unit. My university lecturer used to say, you start with 100% as the grape comes in the door, and it's your responsibility to maintain as much percentage quality as you can throughout the winemaking process. So a lot of technology helps in, in that sort of thing, but then again, the maturation and these barrels here behind us, as far as old world winemaking, you just can't go past that sort of thing. There's still a lot of people trying to recreate barrel maturation using oxygenation and and mm. oak staves in tanks and all those, so all those sorts of things. But basically, you can't replicate what we're doing here, maturing our finest Cabernets and our finest Syrahs in, in, in barrels. Mm. Well, all of our um, Brygon Reserve wines, um, the Reds and the Chardonnays, all enjoy the French and American oak. And David has a particular expertise in combining the American oak and the French oak during the different maturation periods to create the structure and the wonderful fragrances and in particular the spices that emanate from these uh, French and American barrels. So David, just briefly, would you just explain to us why you use American and French oak and, and combine new and old barrels and what spices that we are, we are looking for in the different uh, wines uh, that we create. Obviously you're looking for something different in the Chardonnay compared to the red wines. But just, just a brief explanation on that because I think that's a bit of a hidden science that nobody really understands and very, very few people actually uh, achieve and master. Oh, it's a trade secret, of course. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to let everything out, but yeah. definitely wines mature differently in older barrels as they do to newer barrels and they impart different characters from French oak and American oak. What I'm trying to look at, especially for our Cabernet and Shiraz, is a broad spe spectrum of complexity that not only comes from the quality fruit that we, that we process, but the maturation in all these various various types of oak. American oak, particularly new American oak, can give a very sweet, almost vanillin character mm. to the wine, and it's a very strong from a brand new barrel. There's only a, the barrel is only new once. Yes. When you put your first wine in that barrel, it's not a new barrel anymore because it <clears throat> imparts quite a lot of intense vanillin type characters mm. immediately. As the barrels age and get their second and third filled, there's still some in part of spices and characters, but it's definitely not as upfront and it's a lot more nuanced and you can get some really good maturation characters out of older American oak that while they're still a little, little bit vanillin, they can be a bit more nutmeg and some of those other woodier type characters. Same again with the French oak, French are a lot more complex in my mind, a lot of cedar and other vanillin spices, not as overt as the American oak, but definitely a bit of cigar box and some secondary type oak characters. The new, same, once again, the new barrels impart a lot early, and then the, the second fill barrels impart a bit more subtle, but a lot of good maturation and starts to really get a nice, warm, creamy sort of oak finish that we look for in, mm. in our top. Points. Yeah, it's amazing that combination of old and new, French and American, how you can really start off with the same wine and the same juice, but through this oak treatment you can end up with a, a, a kaleidoscope of flavours and spices and actually um, come up with different tastes which appeal to different people uh, um, and, and also to a smaller extent different food types. So I, just while, before we go on to introducing this exciting new range of the Bruce, um, I'd just like to also, uh, I think it's important for people to realise that Margaret River is a premium wine district and the grapes and the fruit and the wine is so uh, fantastic because we are from a, um, uh, the, not only the way we grow our grapes, we don't have those big irrigation channels, our, wine, our grapes are a lot smaller and therefore the yield is a lot lower which makes, of course, the fruit more expensive per hectare. But there's no substitution for grapefruit. grapefruit. Um, but I, I just, it would be great to just uh, explain what low yield and how we differ from the southeastern Australia and the, 
and New South Wales and some of the places where they've got, they've got a, a much higher yield and, and, and lo lower, lower priced fruit, um, the, our, the quality of our fruit naturally justifies um, the, the little bit of extra expense because of the low yield. Oh, definitely. And I think the statistic that you pointed out at the start, 3% of Australia is crushed, but in excess of 25% of the premium market, that's what Margaret River aspires to do. And we're lucky enough to have our environment to be able to do that. And we're not going to go pumping the wines full to get bigger yields, to get to make more wine to try and sell it at the same price point and risk lowering the quality and lowering the reputation of the region. So it's all winemakers in Margaret River and we all want to be a winemaker in Margaret River because of this very reason of purely focused on best quality fruit at whatever expense it takes because mm. we know that the outcome is the best quality wine and the wines that compete on the world stage with, with all the great wines of the world. So our region sits right up there and we're very proud of that and we're not going to risk our reputation for trying to get better yields. Mm. And our, our wine is, is wonderful, it's unique. It's a little bit more expensive, but really it's uh, tremendous value uh, for, for the dollar anyway. And I think people around the world, everyone likes to pay a little bit more. And there's a saying I think we've all heard that life's too short to drink bad wine. And um, certainly Dave Longdon spent his entire professional life trying to bring to Australia and the rest of the world the very, very best of the best. And um, there's no expense or time. And time's a big thing. They, these, these wines sit in barrels for years occasionally um, to get to the stage where they need to be to get that taste and quality that we're after.